Okay, so um, I've been talking about airlines more than enough. And as you know, I've posted a number of times as much news about the airlines as I can give you. So uh, basically, um, America Airlines, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, they're about to report their losses for this quarter. And up until coronavirus hit, they were basically on track to have like record quarters. But, you know, coronavirus had other plans. So here's the thing. Today I want to talk about oil for people who may be interested in starting a portfolio or adding oil stocks to their portfolio. Because if you've been outside, you've probably noticed oil prices are very low right now. Like for instance, $1.99 buys you a premium unleaded 93 here in New York. I go to BJ's typically to get my oil or my gas, I should say. So gas prices have come down because the airlines aren't flying, you know, jet fuel has come down. Pretty much the oil companies right now are all basically going into the red if they aren't already there. So here's the thing. Let's take a look at some oil stocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the cheapest ones first. And we're also going to focus on the ones that actually pay dividends. It's one thing to buy into oil once it starts getting cheap, but it's another thing to actually hold on to the uh, stocks that you bought and collect dividends on them over a long period of time. It, you have to basically decide what kind of investor you are. Now, there's some of you who probably want to buy as low as possible, and then if it gets higher again, then you just sell it all. But uh, there's a lot of other people who prefer not to do the buy and sell. They want to actually hold on to it and collect as much dividend as they can from it. And, um, you know, it all depends what kind of person you are, basically, what kind of investor you are. So let's see, the first four cheapest oil stocks, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on where were they trading before coronavirus hit. So we're going to take a look up to three months ago. Um, we'll also take a look at their 52-week highs just so we have a good idea about, you know, how healthy the company has been because their highs tell you a good story. Now, you have to do your own research to find out how much debt they're holding and what their situation is as far as... Uh, you know, coronavirus bailouts, because I don't think Trump is bailing out any of the oil companies. So uh, here we go. First of all, we've got DNR. Now, DNR is Denbury Resources, right? Now, Denbury had a 52-week high of $2.68. Three months ago, Denbury was at about $1.02. Um, Denbury right now, as you can see, is trading at 17 cents, a little under 17 cents. The bid is 17.55 and they're asking 17.57. The ask is usually higher than the bid typically. So, NE, Noble Corporation, Ordinary. That's a UK energy company. It's on the nice and it is trading at 19 cents, as you can see. Now, three months ago, they were a dollar um, one. They were over a dollar three months ago. And uh, let's see, they had a 52 week high of three dollars and 10 cents. So basically, as you can see, these things are still in the red. The market is still open right now. We The market doesn't close for another nine minutes. At least, yeah, it's about nine minutes till the market closes. So, um, you're not going to be buying any of this stuff right now. But my thing is, as this uh, coronavirus continues to whip the shit out of the market and people continue to be social distanced and they continue not to be driving, you'll basically see that the oil stocks are going to stay in the lows. But here's a chance that you have to buy into some of them and to start yourself off a portfolio with some energy in it. So anyway, Tetra Technologies, 22 cents right now. Three months ago... Three months ago, let's see, this is how it was doing up until March. So we look at February. In fact, let's go back to six months. Yeah, okay, so we had a high of about $2 right there. But now let's take a look. The 52-week high was $2.56, but right now it's 22 So basically, these first four, including this one right here, Oasis Petroleum. Oasis Petroleum, six months, let's see, this is uh, close to about $4. Three months, it started making its decline. And uh, they look like they were doing pretty well up until about three months ago. So now their 52 week was 715. So Oasis has probably more. Um, and you can't obviously go by the 52 week high. It's just that 
The simple fact is right now, as you can see, all of these companies came down from their high and they're hitting their low right now. So these are otherwise healthy companies. I mean, when you're controlling energy, you're making good money. But these companies right now are falling deep into the red because of the fact nobody's buying oil, nobody's buying gas right now. Until coronavirus, social distancing and whatnot, until this turns around, we're seeing weak lows as this week rolls. And now the airlines are about to announce their losses and they still haven't gotten clearance to start flying again. So these numbers are going to continue to drop precipitously simply because nobody's using the gas. You know, and then you got more and more of these people buying these Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys. So now you have fewer commuters using gas. You got these people driving these shitty Priuses and these stupid Clarities and stuff. So fewer and fewer people are using gas. We're seeing all these lows right now. So right now, these things are losing money. But the bottom line is buy low, sell high. So let's say... Now, I don't, I don't know how much of this you'd want to buy, but these things are 17 cents, 19 cents, 22 cents, 26 cents, 27 cents. However, NBR right here, Neighbors Industries, this pays dividends right here. And by the way, some people ask me about uh, whether or not they should use, uh, what is it called, Robin Hood and Stash. One of my friends is using Stash, and we trade information all the time. And the thing about it is Stash, in some cases, doesn't show or pay dividends for some stocks. Like uh, we were talking about, I think it was American Airlines or uh, I think it was American Airlines or Delta. It was one of those. I, I think I can't even remember which one it was. But I can see the dividends I would get paid, and he couldn't. So it's possible that Stash or Robinhood, it's possible they don't pay you dividends, wherein somebody like me who's trading with TD Ameritrade would actually see it. So anyway, these first couple are really nice, and this last one, NBR, which right now is hitting its 52-week low around uh, this week at $0.26. Cents. This is $0.27 cents right here. It pays a dividend amount of $0.04, cents, but it had a dividend yield of 14 0.67, which is actually pretty good. Now, you know, if you're putting money in the bank, they're only giving you 0 0.05. That's not that great. So the 52-week high was four dollars and eight cents. These first couple, like let's say what let's say you bought, I don't know, a thousand shares of each one. A thousand shares times 17 cents times 19 cents times 22 cents. So basically you're looking at what, $175, $199, uh, $226 and so forth and so on. So um, how about this one, NBR? Like, let's see, where are we right now? 0.27. So I, I also, you know, with the thing, I, I can't really factor in, you know, the uh, commission because I don't know how you trade. So you see basically, what is that? 0.27... 23 per share times 1,000 shares, and that's giving you 272.3. That One of the reasons why I always buy like either 100 or 1,000 shares is because it makes the math really, really easy. It's like all you got to do is just move the decimal point over. So you say 1,000, you're like, oh, 1, 2, 3, and then that's it. And so if you want 1,000 shares of two uh, Oasis, then you're paying $261. However, these things are going to continue to bleed. So this week is, a, as, as you know, I've been talking about this week specifically because it's make or break for the airlines. We already know they're going to report nothing but losses for the most part. But um, I mean, bottom line is coronavirus, you know, as much destruction as, as devastating as it's been, it's making this market affordable for people who wanted to get into the market. Because uh, look at this one, CPE, this is 41 cents, Callan Petroleum Company. And you can do your own research later, like you can read the news. Uh, some of you have news apps and whatever for your stocks. But this one's on the fall right now. Look at this, three months ago, it was okay. Six months ago, it was even better. It was trading as high as $5. But look at this, this thing had a 52-week high of $8.52. So there's a lot of potential there. Then you got LPI right here. Laredo Petroleum, okay, $3.66 was its high. This one does not pay dividends, though. I've been watching Gulfport Energy. Now, my thing is, you see GPOR, I've been watching this, and there were a couple of reasons why I didn't want to spend the money on it. And the reason why, ultimately, it's been coming up. But the problem is, if you look at Gulfport over its long term, Gulfport had it used to be trading at like 
$50 or something a share. And uh, Gulfport's basically been wiped out. Like, in fact, what is this? Uh, let me see. G-P-O-R, right? Gulfport stock. They lost like 99% of their share value in the last five years. Look at this. So, you know, even though it's at its lowest right now, and what I've noticed is within the last month, it's starting to, it seems like it's trying to turn around. I think they have a lot of debt on their hands, and I don't think they're doing really that well. Now, you also notice that some of the other stocks that we're talking about, it shows that people also search for those. You know, Gulfport Energy, somebody put me on to that one, and I was looking at it, and my thing was, it it just, it first of all, it doesn't pay dividends. And then on top of not paying dividends, they, you know, anybody who held the stock lost 99% of their value. Now, does that mean that they can't turn around? That doesn't mean they can't turn around. Anything's possible. My only problem is I just, I'm not feeling it. And you know what? I can put more money in in known quantities like Delta, American Airlines, or, or Japan Airlines. We'll look at that later on. But I could put my money into something I know is paid dividends. And I, I just wasn't feeling Gulfport. I just wasn't feeling it. Like, that doesn't mean I couldn't risk you know, a hundred bucks on the stock or whatever, but no, nah, I'm just not feeling that one. I'm not feeling that. Okay. And not, not to mention, it's also kind of expensive and I think it has more space to fall. Okay. So anyway, Silica Holdings, Silica Holdings right now is $1. twenty. Now, now we'll get into the expensive stocks. So as you'll notice, these are the ones that actually pay dividends. SLCA, had a high of 1872. One of the things you'll notice is most of the stocks that pay dividends, they have the 52 week highs that are typically the highest. Then you have SM Energy Corp. This is a dollar 51 right now. I think they have space to fall. I think they could fall under a dollar. But uh, again, it pays 18.92. That was what it was 15. The 52 week high was 18.92. The dividend yield is one. 0.19, which is obviously higher than the 0 0.05 you get at the bank. And um, that's the thing. They have a higher dividend down here as you go towards the bottom. Like, I'm not even interested in the more expensive stocks. I'm interested in dollar stocks and anything under a dollar, especially if it's fallen because of coronavirus. That's where I want to put my money. Matador Resources Company, $3.21 um, right now, and it's down 21 cents. And Matador pays no dividend, so maybe I'd stay away from that one simply because it doesn't pay the dividend. Um, 22.25 was its 52-week high. Hmm. Okay, and as you can see, the rest of these get more expensive. Like, for instance, this was old Dick Cheney's company, Halliburton. In fact, let's see how they're doing. Let's see how Halliburton's doing. Dick Cheney, that, that, that criminal, that war criminal. So anyway, let's see. Five years. Hmm. They've watched... About 90% of this stock get wiped out. So they, they they were at a high, right there you could see, they were at a high of damn near $60 a share. Definitely 58 59 somewhere around there. And they've watched their value drop down into the toilet. Halliburton Company. Halliburton, Texas. And, uh, you know, you have to do a lot of reading and research because when I have nothing to do, I just sit around reading all of the company news. I usually read the day news and I usually go back a couple of years and I read the news when I when I, when I see the drops. But anyway, stocks making the biggest moves right now. Halber and by the way, it's funny. It says Disney right here. I was just doing research on Disney. They're saying that Disney may not be able to open their parks back up until January of next year. Now, the problem is we don't know how long social distancing is going to last. It could last a very long time. Right now, Disney has bought up a lot of, um, how should I say, intellectual properties. Like, for instance, they bought Star Wars and they bought, I believe, Marvel's The Avengers and everything. So they have all the rights to a lot of important IPs. So um, that's where they're prop making the bulk of their money right now, that and movies, because every time Disney makes a movie, the shit is like a billion dollar movie. Like they could make a damn movie about a, a freaking autistic squirrel and that shit would make a fucking $2 billion and they'd be like, oh, this is the most incredible movie ever. Now you know how it feels to be an autistic squirrel. It's incredible. Like I could just make this shit up. Like if I was writing for Disney right now, I could literally make a movie about a soldier ant 
who gets amputees part like he gets part of his body amputated like he loses two legs or something and and now he has to work as a a, a veteran hospital for ants or something like like disney will come up with shit and they will make three billion dollars off a damn movie that's like incredible i wish i could I wish I could write for them. It doesn't even, like it doesn't have to make sense. I mean, they made a movie about a rat that's a professional chef. I mean, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and they made like over a billion dollars. So anyway, Halliburton's getting its ass kicked right now. Good for them. Good for Dick Cheney. We got uh, Equitrans right here. Now, as you see, these things are getting more and more expensive. I'm not willing to put this kind of money into a stock unless I know it's a physical product that the government is going to back. For example, I don't mind spending $8 or something like that on Delta or American Airlines or United if it falls that far. I don't mind spending that money there because, number one, I know these are essential services because the government ain't going to let these planes stop flying. That's number one. Um, number two... I know that there's a tangible product there that has a good business model behind it, but the problem is coronavirus kicking their ass. So ETRN, APA, CLB, WMB, these are expensive, but as you can see, they had very, very good 52-week highs. And as you can see, they also pay great dividends, 24.49% for ETRN. You know, they, they pay really, really good dividends, but my thing is I'm, I'm not willing to put my money into oil stock when it goes past two or three dollars i'm just not willing to do it and granted you know there's a lot of potential for return it's just that when i diversify i prefer to buy as cheaply as possible but this is where you really want to be looking now i'm not telling you to go and buy it right now i'm not telling you that what i'm saying is that these first couple especially these two right here sm slca and oh geez Come on. Okay. These these first couple, SM, SOCA, NBR, these pay dividends. These are dropping. I would, if I were you, I would watch SLCA. I would watch SM and I'd watch NBR and watch them as they fall. Once these get to something that you would consider where you don't mind risking some money, like once this falls below a dollar, once this falls below a dollar, these two I would definitely buy into, and I'd be intending to keep these for a very long term. Three or four years from now, I don't think we're really going to be talking about coronavirus, except like when we talk about relatives and friends. You'd be like, yeah, hey, whatever happened to Danny? You'd be like, yeah, coronavirus killed him. Oh, shit, man, I miss Danny. Because, you know, the really sad thing about this situation is that it feels to me like people are getting sucked into a black hole. Like, they're cremating people. You can't have funerals for them. You can't meet with their families. So it's like people are just dying and just disappearing. Like I was arguing a little while ago. Okay, let me, let me just see. I was arguing a little while ago with some fucking stupid asshole. And anyway, you know what? No, I'm not even going to go to that. I'm going to try to stay on task. But I was arguing with some stupid Trump support moron. He's like, oh, yeah, the problem isn't the virus. The problem is the overreaction to the virus. I'm like, well, listen. Um, on Pearl Harbor, we lost damn near 3,000 people. On 9-11, we lost over 3,000 people, not to mention all that horse shit that was thrown into the air that caused people to be poisoned, and they got cancers and mesothelioma and this, that, and other. Pearl Harbor and 9-11 were the two most deadliest attacks on U.S. soil. We lost, let's say, 6,000 people. Coronavirus has killed over 40 thousand people so you're talking about something that you can't see you can't declare war against it it doesn't care if you see it or declare war you're talking about you're fighting a goddamn microorganism that's killing people and this guy is up there oh yeah well the problem is not the virus the problem is the overreaction to the virus i'm like what are you stupid it's like well, i mean where do you get this shit I, I, in fact, I did. I want to go back to that because these people are so fucking dumb. It's just incredible. Yeah, this is him right here. This is him right here. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't want you to see all my information. The problem is not the. This is John Wirtz. On and he, you, know, you can tell from his name, he's an idiot. John Wirtz. I don't know anyone with a virus. 
I know thousands out of work because of mindless fear. Get back to work now. You stupid bastard. You say, you know, see, that's the, that's what's missing from when, you know, somebody like Sean Hannity or Will Cow or these morons get on the radio. What's missing is somebody loud enough because these Democrats, to tell you the truth, these guys have no spines. That's why I'm, I'm not a Democrat. Some people keep calling me liberal and they pissing me off and call me liberal and stuff. I'm not a liberal. It's like. My thing is, it's like, where's the person who talks back and tells you, you stupid bastard? You, we got 40,000 people dead in less than three months. You stupid bastard. In fact, let's see his profile, this moron. It's like, does your wife know she married a moron? A moron. Does your wife know that? Let's see, what does he do for a living? President at John Words Finance. Yeah, okay, all right. So we got, we got another one of these self-employed idiot Idiots. Oh my God, I feel sorry for, what's her name, Beverly. I really feel sorry for her. This is ridiculous. It's like, it makes it so you don't even feel like arguing with people because at a certain point, you just can't do it no more. It's like, what are you, stupid? It's like, this is 9-11 times, what is it, 3,000 divided by 40. What the fuck is wrong with you? What are you, stupid? I mean, Pearl Harbor and 9-11 together didn't even kill a third of the people that this shit is still killing. You stupid bastard. I hope somebody tells you I'm talking about you. Because there ain't nothing you could do about it. Because me and the Kimba don't joke. So anyway, what was I saying? What was I saying? Okay, right back to cruise lines. RLCLF. Anybody, I told you, I told you, I told you, if you bought RLCLF, when I, was, when I told you I mentioned cruise lines, I showed you I was got Carnival, Royal Caribbean. I told you about this. RLCLF is basically a penny stock. It doesn't pay dividends. But this thing has been on the rise. Royal Olympic Cruise Lines. I know nobody's planning on taking in cruises right now. I understand that. But I've told you, I said, listen, if you got a couple of bucks to spare and you just want to make some quick cash, Royal Olympic Cruise Lines. If you did what I told, like I've been making these movies. Nobody's listening to me. The only time anybody listens to me is when I'm driving a car and chasing a Honda Accord, making fun of it. Nobody pays any attention when I'm telling you how to make money. So anyway, 0 0.018, wait, where, where what? I, I told people, I told, when I told you about this stock originally, this stock was 0 0.00 and it was four, right? So if you spent just enough to buy a thousand shares, which should have been about $40, no, $4, okay. If you spent $40 on this stock or even $10, whatever, and you bought a thousand shares of this. If you bought a thousand, just a just a thousand shares, it was so cheap. If you bought a thousand shares of this right now, is zero one eight, right? You'd have made eighteen dollars off that thousand shares. But obviously, you would have bought way more. So if you bought like ten thousand shares, like this, it, it was like I was watching this one come up, and I'm making money off of this. And and a couple of people, I think I mentioned this in an, another video because I mentioned this when it got to point zero fourteen. But this thing keeps on going up, and the day it, it just keeps on going up. But the thing about it is, this is like one of those. If you want to hold it for a long time, you can hold it and hope that the cruise industry ever gets that big because the the fifty two week high wasn't really that high. Like it had a high. I I always look at the fifty two weeks high high. But this is three years. It rose as high as 0 0.04. So right now it's 0 0.01. So that means that it's very, very possible that this could keep going. And even if I said, okay, it can go to four cents, right? You'd still make some decent money depending upon how much you put into it. But the problem is I was telling people to get into it like, like a month ago. Like when I told people it was like 0 0.004. I mean, it was lower than a penny and when it was lower than a penny if you got in then and you bought like ten thousand shares yeah it would cost you like forty dollars the thing about it is you would have gotten some serious profit off of that so you know what anyway spilt milk under the bridge but um where are we uh cruise lines uh carnival cruise is definitely dipping i'm looking into information that says yeah carnival uh, they're definitely going to be in danger soon but the bottom line is this you got to remember coronavirus ain't going to last forever when this market gets back to kicking, you're going to have all these old people who are stir crazy and they're going to want to get on the cruise lines. They're going to get on, get on these boats and they're going to pay the fees. The fees are going to start out cheap. They're going to get more expensive, but these people are going to want to go on their cruises. 
Like, I, I've got people I know who always ask me, hey, you want to go on a cruise? It's like $500. The last time I went on a cruise, it was car uh, Carnival, and we took a boat to Nova Scotia. To tell you the truth, they ain't shit Nova Scotia at all. It was like it was like going to one of these malls that nobody goes to and just walking around. There was nothing up there. There was nothing to do. I went on that cruise during Hurricane Katrina, and we left port, I think, right before Hurricane Katrina really got bad and the levees broke. So I'll never forget the fact that I was on that cruise. And to tell you the truth, I hate cruises. You guys know me. I like to fly. Like, in addition to flying planes, recreational, I like to go business class because first class is way too expensive. I'm not paying you $10,000 just to have a private booth. Fuck that. Business class is perfect because business class, you pay like maybe $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. You get a nice seat. You get all you can drink, wine. The stewardesses know your name, this, that, and other. I made a video about that. I want to make another one, but I don't know if I'll be able to go to Indonesia this summer because obviously coronavirus might have fucked up my vacation. But anyway, what is this? What is this right here? Uh, come on. I don't know why these these stupid Flash things. It, it, see, Flash and Java, they never co participate. But anyway, I showed you these a while ago. I keep showing you my... Every time I do a video, I try to show you the entire portfolio, even if I'm not going to talk about everything. But um, the thing I like about Carnival, and I believe this is Royal Caribbean, the, re the thing I like about them, their prices are coming down, especially Royal Caribbean. The price is ultimately going to come down. Because and and when I say the price is going to come down, you look at thirty five ninety five and you're like, oh, that's too expensive. Thing about it is, the fifty two week high was one hundred and thirty five dollars. Look how much money these guys are losing, and they they can't even move those boats right now. Because if you go, if you pay for like a one week cruise, coronavirus gives you an extra three weeks because you're stuck on that boat and they're not letting you go to port. So they're down from one hundred and thirty five dollars. So what is that? That's 135. Let's do the math. Let's do the math. Let's use a calculator because I hate guessing. Let's see. 135 divided by 35.9. And that's, they're down 3.76 times. Like their, 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 their share price has been knocked down that much. It's incredible. Down from 135. But also, this stock has a dividend yield of 834. Carnival has fifteen ninety two. Now I do not want you to buy this right now because obviously they're still getting their asses kicked. They're still in the red. No, keep waiting. Let them bleed. That's what. That's my phrase. Let them bleed out because when you know it turns red, it looks like blood. Let them keep bleeding, and after they keep bleeding, then you get in. Buy. What is bottom line is this: buy low, sell high. Buy on the rumor, sell on the fact. Be fearful when others are greedy, and be greedy when others are fearful. That's what you're supposed to Those are the three rules. So anyway, back to airlines. Back to airlines. Okay, so I already got JetBlue, but I got it when it was a little bit cheaper than this. But here's the thing. American Airlines, I noticed, fell below a do um, $11. It fell below $11 today, so anybody who's waiting to get in, don't buy yet. American Airlines, United, and... Um, Delta are about to announce their losses. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, America Airlines announces theirs on the 21st. I think it's it's either America Airlines or it's Delta, but they're about to announce their losses. The, the key dates are the 21st, the 22nd, and the 28th. United Airlines is the 28th. United Airlines, as far as I see, does not pay a dividend to me. If I, you know, if you buy United Airlines, but first of all, United Airlines at $27 too expensive. America Airlines and Delta are the place to look. And Delta and America Airlines, I think the reason why it's giving me that timeout problem is because the uh, market is closed right now. But anyway, um, Delta Airlines and America Airlines both have their dividends. Delta pays uh, 6.42, America Airlines pays 3.46. Delta, the fuck? Uh, let me go back. Wait, okay, wait. I know what happened. I got logged out because of in what they thought was inactivity or whatever. So I'm going to hurry and finish this up right now. But anyway, um, Delta Airlines pays uh, 6.42. Um, and what is it called? The other one I was looking at was Japan Airlines. I flown Japan Airlines a while back, 2003. I flew to Japan, Tokyo. Um, I liked them. Really nice, beautiful stewardesses. I really liked them. 
they're getting their asses kicked right now by coronavirus. So first of all, Japan Airlines, you know it's it's Japan Airlines. This is not going to be allowed to fail. 52 week high was $17.19, but the reason why I like Japan Airlines, America Airlines, and um, and what is it called? Uh, uh, Japan Airlines pays dividends. And their dividend for Japan Airlines is a 5.65 yield. It's getting cheaper as time goes on. So is America Airlines. So these two pay dividends. You've got um, Air YY, I believe is Air China. They pay dividends as well. They pay um, not as much though. They're only 0.96. I'd leave them alone right now. Uh, who else? Oh, uh, Boeing. As you know, Boeing is about to start production of their planes again. And they have a wide body plane that they're producing. So the thing about it is we all know Boeing got their asses kicked before coronavirus because of the 737 crashing itself into the ground when it felt that you're not flying right. So it decides, it says, fuck it, I'm just gonna crash into the goddamn ground. That's some shit we can't have. That's why I prefer Airbus. It's like, there's a saying, if it's Boeing, I ain't going. Okay, so dividend yield is 5.34. They're 52 week high. The only reason why we're even talking about Boeing with them making these goddamn suicidal airplanes only reason why we're talking about them is because their 52 week high is 391. If they can get there once, they can get there again. They only really started falling apart when the 737 started slamming itself into the ground. So let me see, Boeing stock, Borg implants, holy shit. See, this is why you never allow people to look through your uh, browser history because God knows what's there. So anyway, um, Five years ago, they were doing pretty well. They were at $440. And this was, well, shit, they were at $440. February of 2019, look at that, $424. And right now, they're down to $143. They're getting their asses kicked. And that'll teach you. The next time you'll want to slide in some software that decides to kill me, that'll teach you. That'll teach you right there. Because as far as I'm concerned, the 747 is not on top no more. The A380 is the best plane in the world. And that's why they're trying to kill it. Because the, everybody loves the A380. It's the best plane there is. The A350 is better than the 777. I don't like the 777. You don't even, and the, on the 747, you don't even have electric sockets for every single person. The A380's got it for every single person. So as far as I'm concerned, with the exception of the fact that America has obviously chosen you over Airbus, which is, again, this what we're talking about here is America bailing Boeing out. America bailing. America Airlines out. America bailing Delta out. America bailing. You just, all of you are on welfare. Why is it that I'm the only person and I'm not collecting welfare and you're on welfare? What's that about? Y'all getting welfare checks. Y'all getting these big ass checks from Trump. Y'all getting all these welfare checks. I didn't even get $1,200 because I make over $100,000. What, what, what is that? What is that? Y'all are getting welfare checks, not me? See, this is why a government's not supposed to be bailing anybody out. Because then, now there's no means testing. They're sending welfare checks to dead people. Because there's dead people who died this year. And they went off the tax information from 2018. Everybody else gets welfare. I get nothing. If I got my $1,200, I would have bought nothing but oil stock. But you give me nothing. And you're all you big CEOs with your suits and your private jets and your gold watches. All y'all are on welfare. You're on welfare and I'm not. I paid for it. You see this computer? This fucking thing was $5,000. This monitor was $1,000. This 2080 Ti was $1,100. I didn't get no welfare. I had to work for this shit. And y'all getting welfare checks? That's bullshit. So anyway, as I was saying, let's see. Five years ago, we're talking about $440. So Boeing has some great, great potential, even though they make stupid planes that kill you. So, you know, if it's Boeing, I ain't going. I want to be on an Airbus, A380, A350-900, A380-800. I don't want to be on no damn Boeing. And I don't even like being on those A330s. Those things are too small. I don't like them. No, thank you. I don't like those. No. 
So anyway, that's about it for right now. So I got, listen, if you've got some money, you got your tax return, you get your Trump welfare check that I'm not getting because I make too much money the honest way by working and making money and saving money and investing money smartly. And I, and I, I don't get anything, but you get your welfare check. I don't get anything. Well, then, you know, if you're not having to use it and you don't want to waste it, you know, what you really should consider doing is uh, looking into some of those stocks that pay dividends, just like I pointed out to you. So thank you very much for joining me. It was a wonderful day and uh, hopefully everybody enjoys your day and I hope everybody lives long enough to see uh, January.